Hello everyone, my name is David Martini uh, from Red Hat. I am Specialist Solution Architect and today um, we will demonstrate to you how to deploy OpenShift on a Nutanix stack. And for that, I am with uh, my colleague from Nutanix, Fabrice. Hello everyone, Fabrice Krebs. Uh, I'm working for Nutanix for five years now and uh, I'm uh, EME DevOps and Automation Specialist. Okay, so before going further in the presentation, let's just summarize what is what are the key partnership benefits. So the first one is that now Red Hat OpenShift is the preferred choice for deploying uh, full stack Kubernetes on top of Nutanix Cloud Platform. And uh, the opposite way as well is that now Nutanix Cloud Platform is the preferred choice for any uh, HCI deployment uh, uh, with, uh, with Red Hat OpenShift. And uh, now we have a, a joint engineering one map that will provide a better uh, and robust inter interoperability. And it will help as well to have a, a better and a seamless support experience for the, for the end customer. If we have a look on the different products within this partnership, we have RHEL uh, and Smart Management are now fully supported on Nutanix and HHV hypervisor. About Ansible Automation Platform, we have a new certified collection available on console.redout.com to configure and consume everything you want on Nutanix stack. And finally, uh, OpenShift is of course fully supported with a dedicated certified CSI operator. And uh, since uh, the last uh, OpenShift release, you have the IPI method uh, to automatically deploy an OpenShift cluster on Nutanix. Okay, so now based on this jargon, we can see on the left side uh, what we call pre-central. So pre-central is a uh, portal that we use to manage all the services that you will enable or consume on top of Nutanix. Uh, we can see on the bottom of the image that we are running on physical server and it will form the HCI stack that will be managed by Nutanix. On top of this HCI stack, for HCI is called for hyperconverged infrastructure, uh, we will run a virtualization layer that can be uh, our own virtualization solution, which is called AHV. In OpenShift use case, it's important to have this uh, AHV uh, layer because it's where the worker and the master will be deployed. And um, we can add additionally create and manage uh, Nutanix storage services, which can be block storage, file storage, or object storage. And uh, finally, we provide a database as a service solution that will help the customer to deploy database engine automatically from the single uh, pane of management. And we are able to, to deploy the, the more major database solution on market, which will be, for example, PostgreSQL, MyDB, SQL Server, Oracle, or whatever. And uh, so this is the the... the the important stack that will be consumed by the OpenShift cluster. And now I will let us explain uh, to David uh, for the OpenShift uh, layer. Thank you, Fabrice. So if we focus on the OpenShift deployment and the next stack, so we are using a VM Bastion. So um, on this Bastion, we installed the OpenShift install CLI. So um, this CLI, communicate directly with Prism Central API to deploy automatically uh, the OpenShift cluster. So uh, it deploys the control plane and the data plane automatically um, with, a, with a different VMs. And in D2 operation, we can see on the um, number four, we will deploy from the operator the certified CSI operator from Nutanix to consume directly and transparently uh, from uh, my, the OpenShift cluster, the storage provided by the Nutanix stack. So you can consume uh, volume, so block storage, file storage, but you can also um, consume object storage directly from the application with S3 bucket. Uh, the last thing we can mention is um, the interaction uh, the future interaction um, with the Nutanix NDB. So Nutanix works uh, on uh, NDB operator uh, from uh, for, for for OpenShift to deploy 
from a manifest, a Kubernetes manifest um, in OpenShift to ask to the Nutanix stack to deploy an NDB um, database like uh, Oracle or um, SQL Server to store all uh, stateful data in this database managed by Nutanix NDB and to um, have to the stateless uh, application manage uh, on the on the OpenShift cluster to benefit for, uh, to all the elasticity and all the dynamicity um, provided by OpenShift cluster. Before to deploy your first OpenShift cluster on Nutanix stack, you have some prerequisites. The first one is to book two IPs for virtual IPs needed for OpenShift. The first one uh, for the OpenShift API endpoint and the second one for OpenShift ingress endpoint. You have also um, to create the corresponding DNS record for this VIP. And an important thing, you have to enable IPAM features on the Nutanix part on the subnet where you plan to deploy your OpenShift cluster. And finally, of course, you need to have the different tools to deploy your, your cluster. Okay, so now we are connected to Prism Central. So as I said, Prism Central is uh, the management plane that we use to manage all Nutanix clusters and uh, services deployed on top of uh, Nutanix. So we can see here that we have actually one Nutanix cluster for this demo, which is the M3 POC uh, 024. And uh, on the left side, we can see all the service that we can manage. So uh, as David said, as a prerequisite, we need to have a subnet, which has an IPAM setup. So it's what we did for this uh, demonstration. We've created OpenShift subnet here. And as you can see, if I just update it, I can see that I set IP pools, uh, IP address pools here. And it's uh, where the OpenShift worker and master will be deployed. Once uh, it will be deployed, uh, we will see it under the VM uh, section here. So as you can see for now, we only have four VM running on this cluster, uh, which one uh, with one which is a uh, Bastion VM, and it's the one that uh, David will use for uh, deploying the, the demo of uh, OpenShift. And now I will let uh, David uh, continue for the demo. Thank you, Fabrice. So now we will deploy our first cluster. So for that, I am connected to my Bastion VM. And I installed the OpenShift install CLI. So I have the last one, the 4.11. And I created also a directory uh, where I will put all my config files. I have um, a YAML file, Nutella basic code, uh, where I um, put all the information about the um, Prism Central account used by my OpenShift cluster. So let's go. Um, we will create the OpenShift config file with this command OpenShift install create install config with uh, my uh, directory. The CLI uh, asked me some questions, so the CSH, SSH public key on which platform I want to deploy my cluster, the Prism Central URL, the port, the Prism Central user, password, So the CLI uh, connect directly to the Prism Central API and um, detect the different cluster. I have only one and the subnet where I want to deploy my cluster. He asked me the virtual IP for the OpenShift API endpoint.
and the virtual IP for the ingress endpoint. The base domain and the OpenShift cluster name. And finally, I have to put my pool secret. And it's done. So um, I have now uh, my config file. I can review it, and I can I can change some value. So, for example, by default, it's three workers. Um, I can uh, have six or nine, and I can modify here the number of workers. Uh, I can also modify the subnet for the pod network or for the service network. After to obtain the config file, we have some extra steps uh, to configure the machine API for Nutanix. So for that, uh, I need to get my OpenShift release and to extract the manifest file for the machine set API so I I have extracted the manifest the manifest file and um, we need to obtain the secret for this machine file with the command ccotl. So for that I used the manifest I just extract and the nuta basic out yaml file with my openshift uh, my prism central user. I obtain a secret So this is the secret from OpenShift Machine API with the encrypted credential of my um, Prism Central user. This secret will be used uh, when my cluster uh, will be deployed to scale uh, automatically my OpenShift cluster if needed. After I have the config file and the secret for machine API. I can continue the install. So I can create the manifest file. So everything is documented in the official documentation. And finally, I can deploy my, gl my cluster. with all config file in my directory. So the CLI uh, will create everything on Nutanix. So we start with um, the infrastructure part. If I come back on Nutanix, I can um, see uh, the different steps. So uh, for the moment, the um, core OS image um, is created and after all the um, virtual machine for OpenShift will be deployed. It's done. My OpenShift cluster is not totally deployed. Uh, it takes a bit more of 25 minutes to deploy and I have the OpenShift console URL. So if I copy this URL and pass in the new tab. And can connect with the temporary cube admin user. And the generated password.
I can say my cluster is up and running and I can have a look on the different nodes corresponding to, to virtual machine deployed on the Nutanix stack. I have three masters and three workers. I can uh, I can also um, have a look on the machine set. So the machine set is uh, already configured and permit to me to scale my cluster um, with the ability to add new worker nodes. So to do that, I edit this machine set and I add new worker. I just to click save and my OpenShift will ask directly to the Nutanix cluster to extend a new virtual machine to have more worker nodes and have six worker nodes. So if I come back to the Prime Central and the VM section, I can see in the operation a new task to request new worker to scale my, my new um, OpenShift cluster. So now we have our um, OpenShift cluster up and running. We have to configure the storage part. So for that, we have um, a dedicated and certified um, operator. So we have just to go on the operator hub, the marketplace of OpenShift, and I let Fabrice describe this part. Okay, thank you, Martin. Uh, David. So uh, now I will just search for the Nutanix keyword, and then I will see the Nutanix CSI operator. I just need to click on install, and I keep the default parameter, and I click install. After a couple of seconds, I will see the operator which will be deployed, and then I will be able to configure it. Okay, so now we can see that the operator is installed. So before going further, we will need to create a secret which will be used uh, to configure the CSI driver. So I go under the workload secret section, and then I will create a new one by clicking on, on the plus icon on the top. I paste the configuration that I've already uh, defined. So we can see here that we define the correct namespace, that the secret will be placed, and then the IP address, the ports, the username and password of the Prism cluster, of the Nutanix cluster. I click on create. Okay, so the secret is now defined. So now I will install a new CSI instance. So to do that, I go under the operator that we just installed before, and I define to create a new instance here. I keep the default password. That's it. So now the instance is deployed. The last thing that I have to do it's to create a new storage class to be able to consume uh, the storage from the Kubernetes environment. So I go under the storage, storage class section. Then I go, I have already created a YAML file. So I use this YAML file here. So what you can see here is that we define the secrets that we've, we just created, the namespace that I said before, that uh, we use the storage type Nutanix volume. And an important one is that we define the storage container. So if I go back to the Prism central, I can see under the storage container section that we define an OpenShift container for the cluster, uh, the demo cluster that we have. And it's where the persistent volume, so the volume will be created by the CSI driver. So if I go back here and I click on create, I will see the storage class uh, defined now. And then uh, David will be able to use this, um, this PVC, uh, this, this storage class now. So no storage class is defined. We can create a persistent volume claim test to, to validate this part. So um, I go to the PVC claim, 
I create a new one. I choose um, define new uh, storage class, new text volume. I define a name for that and the size. I can choose the volume mode, file system or block, and click on create. So um, I can see the, the new PVC is now bound. And if I come back on the Prim Central interface and I go to the volume groups, I can see this new uh, PVC. So um, uh, to, to conclude this part, um, we have installed the uh, operator, the CSI operator, directly to OpenShift. And we can see the interaction between OpenShift and Nutanix to provide uh, transparently the storage part. OK. As David said at the beginning of the presentation, we have the alpha release of uh, our Nutanix database operator that is published on GitHub. So I will demonstrate to you today how we can deploy it. Uh, again, keep in mind that it's an alpha release. So first of all, what is NDB, Nutanix NDB? It's our solution that we uh, developed, which will help you to, de to de deploy database engine that you can see here. And we can now do the link between Kubernetes and Nutanix database. So you can claim the database from the, Nutanix, from the Kubernetes manifest. To do that, uh, I will deploy the Nutanix operator, which is available at this address. And uh, I will just follow the step-by-step the -step guide to the installation. So I switch back to the Bastion VM. And the first thing I will do is to install the operator. So it will take a couple of seconds to do that. And the second step will, uh, will be to create the required secrets that we will use to connect from OpenShift to uh, the, uh, the NDB platform. So I will launch these manifest file. So we can see here that we set the, the username and password to connect to the, the platform. And the second thing I will do is to apply the manifest file to claim the database uh, that I will require. So inside the, data, the database manifest file, I can see the name of the database I want to be deployed, the Nutanix cluster where I want to deploy, and uh, the, the, the type of database. For this example, I will do Postgre, and that we will create two databases inside the database uh, server. So I apply this manifest. And now we should see a new uh, CRD, which was created. And we can see that the database is in provisioning state. So if I switch now to the interface, I should see a new task, which is running. You can see here. And you can see that it's the latest task is here, is the database instance 02, and then the system will deploy it for you. And once it will be finished, then you will see it here as ready. And just for your information, if I do a QCTL um, get CRD, no, sorry. We can see the CRD database and DB Nutanix, which was created and is the one that we are managing. Okay, so now that you've seen how easy it is to deploy OpenShift cluster on top of Nutanix, and if you are curious or want to, to learn more about the Nutanix ecosystem, be free to just uh, connect to NutanixUniversity.com websites uh, to enjoy our self civil learning um, solution. You have the same on the um, Red Hat site with the uh, Red Hat developer website. You can access to different OpenShift, OpenShift labs.
so directly from your um, uh, browser uh, if you want to learn more about OpenShift. So thank you for watching uh, and see you. Thank you guys.